Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. Who's looking after the other dogs, Marge? Uncle Vernon asked. Oh, I've got Colonel Fobster managing them, bloomed out Marge. He's retired now. Good to him has some t have something to do. But I don't leave poor old Ripper. He pines if he's all away from me. Ripper began to growl against as Harry sat down. This directed Aunt Marge's attention to Harry for the first time. So, she barked, still here, are you? Yes, said Harry. Don't you say yes in that ungrateful tone, Aunt Marge growled. It's damn good of Vernon and Petunia to keep you. Wouldn't have done myself. You've done straight to an orphanage if you'd been dumped on my doorstep. My ha Harry was bursting to say that he'd rather live in an orphanage than with the Darcy's, but he thought of the whole Smith form stopped him. He forced his face into a painful smile. Don't you smirk at me, boomed on Marge. I can see you haven't improved so much since I last saw you. I hoped school would knock some manners into you. She took a large gulp of tea, wiped her mustache and said, Where is it that you sent him again, Vernon? Said the Brustus, Uncle Vernon promptly. It's a first-rate institution for hopeless cares, cases. I see, said Armand. Do they use the cane as said Buster's boy? She barked across the table. Er, uh, Uncle Vernon nodded curtly behind Aunt Marge's back. Yes, said Harry. Then, feeling he might as well do the thing probably he added. All the time. Excellent, said Aunt Marge. I don't have this namby pamby wishy washy nonsense about not hating people who deserve it. A good thrashing was that need in 99 cases out of 100. Have you been beaten often? Oh, yeah, said Harry. Lots of times. Aunt Marge narrowed her eyes. I still don't like your tone, boy, she asked. If you can speak of your beatings in that casual way, they clearly aren't hated you hard enough. Petunia, I'd rather if I were you. Make it clear that you approve the use of extreme force in this boy's case. Perhaps Uncle Vernon was worried that Harry might forget their bargain. In any case, he changed the subject abruptly. How are the news this morning, Marge? What about the escaped prisoner, eh? Aunt, Aunt Marge decided to t started to make herself at home. Harry caught himself thinking almost lonely alive as number four without her. Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia usually encouraged Harry to stay out of the way, which Harry was only too happy to do. Aunt Marge, on the other hand, wanted Harry under her eyes all the time so that she could boom out suggestions for his improvement. She delighted in complaining Harry with Dudley and took a huge pleasure uh, buying deadly, buying deadly expensive presents while he got at Harry, as though daring him to ask why he hadn't got a present too. She also kept throwing such an, an a satisfactory person. You mustn't blame yourself for the way the boys turned out, Vernon, she said over lunch for the third day. If there is something rotten on the inside, there's nothing anyone can do about it. Harry tried to concentrate on his food, but his hands shook and his face was starting to burn with anger. Remember the form, he, did, he told himself. Think about Hogsmeade. Don't say anything. Don't voice. Aunt Marge reached for her glass of wine. It's one of the basic rules of breeding, she said. You see it all the time with dogs. If there's something wrong with a bitch, there's something wrong with a pup. At that moment, the wine glass Aunt mugged. Marge was falled and exploded in her hand. Shards of glass flew in every direction and Aunt Marge spotted and blinked, her great tavadery face dripping. Marge! squealed Aunt Petunia. Marge, are you alright? Not to worry, grunted Aunt Marge, mopping her face with her napkin. Must have squeezed it into hard. Did the same thing at Colonel Hobster's the other day. No need to pause, Petunia. I have a very firm grip. But Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon were both looking at Harry suspiciously, so he decided he'd better skip puddling and escape from the table as soon as he could. Outside in the hall, they, he leaned against the wall, breathing deeply. It had been a long time since he'd lost control and made something explode. The Hogsmeade form wasn't the only thing it said take. If he, if he carried on the like that, he'd be in trouble with the Ministry of Magic. Harry was still an underage wizard, and he was forbidden by wizard law to do magic outside school. His record wasn't exactly clean either. Only last summer he'd got an official warning which had started quite clearly that if the Ministry got wind of any more magic in private drive, Harry would face explosion from Hogwarts. He heard the Dursleys leaving the table and hurried upstairs after the way. Harry got through the next three days by forcing himself to think about his handbook and do it himself in care whenever Aunt Marge started to him. Uh, this worked quite well, though it seemed to give him a glazed look because Aunt Marge started voicing the op opinion that he was mentally subnormal. A 
last, at long last, the final evening of Marge's day arrived. Uncle Petunia looked, cooked a fancy dinner, and Uncle Vernon unhooked, uncooked several bottles of wine. They got all the way through the soup and the salmon without a single mention of Harry's fault. During the lemon fern and cupai, Uncle Vernon bore them all with a long talk about Granny's, this his drill-making company. Then Aunt Petunia made coffee, and Uncle Vernon brought it out a, a, a bottle of brandy. Can I tempt you, Marge? Aunt Marge had always had rather a lot of wine. Her huge face was very red. Just a small one, then, she chuckled. And a bit more than that, and a bit more. That's the boy. Dudley was eating his fourth slice of pie. Aunt Petunia was slipping coffee, coffee with her little finger sticking out. Harry, want, uh, Harry really wanted to disappear into his bedroom, but he met Uncle Vernon's angry little eyes and knew he wouldn't have to sit it out. Ah, oh, said Uncle Marge, making her lips and putting the empty brandy glass back down. Excellent, no, Petunia. It's normally just a fry up for me in the evening, with twelve dogs to look after. She burped richly and patted her head twice. Great, great tweed stomach. Pardon me, but I do like to see a healthy sized boy, she went on thinking, winking at Dudley. You'll be a proper side man. Dad, this, like your father. Yes, I'll have a spot more brandy. Vernon, now this one here. She checked her head at Harry, who felt his stomach clench. The handbook, he thought quickly. This one's got a mean, ranty look about him. You get what the, that with dogs. I had Colonel Father Webster down once last year. Ready little thing it was. Weak, underbred. Harry was trying to remember page 12 of his book, A Charm to Cure re Reluctant Reverses. It all comes down to blood. As I was saying the other day, bad blood will out. Now, I'm saying nothing against your family, Petunia. She patted Aunt Petunia's bony head with her shower like one. But your sister was a bad egg. They turn up into the best families. Then she ran off with the worst troll, and here's the result right in front of us. Harry was staring at his plate, a funny ringing in his ears. Grasp your groom firmly by the tail, he thought, but he couldn't remember what came next. Aunt Marge's voice seemed to be boring into him like one of Uncle Vernon's drills. This porter, said Aunt Marge loudly, seizing the brandy bottle and splashing more into her glass and over the tablecloth. You never told me what he did? Uncle Vernon and Petunia were looking extremely tense. Dudley had even looked up from his spot to gape at his parents. He didn't work, said Uncle Vernon, with a half glance at Harry. Unemployed. As I expected, said Aunt Marge, taking a huge swig of brandy and swim, wiping her chin on her sleeve. And no account good for nothing. Lazy's counter, too. He was not, said Harry suddenly. The table went very quiet. Harry was shaking all over. He had never felt so angry in his life. More brandy, yelled Uncle Vernon, who had gone very white. He emptied the bottle onto Aunt Marge's glass. You boy, he smudged at Harry. Go to bed. Go on. No, Vernon. He coughed on Marge, holding up a can in her tiny bloodshed and eyes fixed on Harry. Go on, boy, go on. Proud of your parents, are you? They go and get themselves kick, killed in a car crash. Drunk, I expect. They didn't die in a car crash, said Harry, who found himself at his feet. They died in a car crash on your nasty little liar and left you to be a burden on their decent, hard-working relatives, screamed Count March, swelling with furry. You are an innocent, ungrateful little, but Aunt March suddenly stopped speaking. For a moment, she looked like as though words had failed her. She seemed to be swelling with unexpectable anger, but the swelling didn't stop. Her great face started to expand. Her tiny eyes boggled the next mouth, stretched into a tiny the speech. Next second, several buttons burst from her tweed jacket and pink chuffed the walls. She was inflated like a monstrous balloon. Her stomach burst in three of her wee twistlings, each of her fingers blowing up like salami. March! yelled Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia together, as Aunt March's whole body began to rise off her chair towards the ceiling. She went turning around now, like a vast live boy with piggy eyes, and her hands and feet stuck out weirdly as she drifted up into the air, making epileptic popping noises. Ripper came skinning into the broom, marking madly. No! Uncle Vernon seized one of Marge's feet and tried to pull her down again, but uh, that was almost lifted from the roof himself. Next second, Tripper had leapt forward and stuck his feet into Uncle Vernon's lap. Harry tore from the dining room before anyone could stop him. Heading for the cupboard on his desk, the cupboard door burst magically open as he reached it. In seconds, he had heaved to heaved, heaved his trunk to the front door. He sprinted upstairs and threw himself into the bed, wrenched up the floor, loose floorboard and gave the pillowcase full of his books and birthday presents. He wriggled out, seized Hagrid's epic cage, and dashed back downstairs to his trunk. Just as Uncle Vernon burst out of the dining room, his trousers are like in bloody batters. Come back in here, he bellowed. Come back and put her right. But a reckless rage had him over Harry. He kicked his trunk open, pulled out his wand and the 
be the general for Vernon. She deserved it, said Harry, breathing very fast. She deserved what she got. You keep away from me. He mumbled to Ryan Hoover, the crash over the door. I'm going, said Harry. I'm can't. I've had enough. 